everybody, it's Molly with All Ears and I'm here today with a brand new video. Today we are at Disney's Animal Kingdom, my favorite park in Walt Disney World, and we're gonna have a good day. No, a great day. No, the best day ever. That's right, today we are gonna spend all day at Disney's Animal Kingdom and I'm gonna share tips and tricks along the way on how to have a perfect day at this park. We're gonna do all the best attractions, enjoy some of my favorite snacks, see some great entertainment, and I'll share tips and tricks along the way on how to avoid long lines, how to maximize your fun, and plan your day at Disney's Animal Kingdom. I hope you're ready, I hope you're excited. It's gonna be, say it with me now, wild. We had to make that pun. I'm sorry. Let's go. Oh, I love it here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. It's my favorite park, like I said. I just think it is so beautiful and so immersive, and I love so many of the attractions and the shows here. That's kind of a hot take, though. A lot of people don't like Animal Kingdom as much, and I think they just haven't fully immersed themselves into the experience. But we are gonna have a great day today. All right, here we go, headed to our first attraction. This is the one I recommend going to first. Oh, did you think we are going to Pandora? We're definitely not. We are going straight to Africa, my friends. Here's my first pro tip of this video. If you are a resort guest and you are coming in for early park entry, definitely recommend doing that at this park and heading straight to Flight of Passage. It was a posted 30 minute wait all morning during the early park entry today, which was from 7.30 to 8. But if you are not a resort guest, I recommend coming into the park and heading straight to Kilimanjaro Safaris. Kilimanjaro Safaris does not open for early park entry, so you're not behind the resort crowd. And if you go early enough in the morning, the animals are a lot more active because it's cooler out than uh, later when it's really hot. So I love to start the day with a safari. It gets me really in the mood for Animal Kingdom. And you're likely to see more active animals. And I guess if you're a resort guest, knock out Navi River Journey after Flight of Passage if you're really passionate about it. 15 minutes at Kilimanjaro Safaris to start off the morning. Sounds perfect. You may notice I am going through the standby lane. I did not purchase Genie Plus today. I don't think you really need it at Disney's Animal Kingdom most days, so I have not paid for it, and I don't even plan on paying for it to ride Flight of Passage because I feel like you can get on it without paying extra. So, in my opinion, this is not a park you need Genie Plus during most days. Maybe during like Christmas week um, and the busy, busy times of the year, you can benefit from it, but on a regular day, you can navigate this park pretty easily without it. Kilimanjaro Safaris is the flagship attraction here at Animal Kingdom. It's about a 20-25 minute safari ride through the Harambe Wildlife Reserve where you're going to see real animals such as lions, giraffes, elephants, rhinos, zebras. It doesn't have a height requirement so this one is great for the whole family and it is the perfect Animal Kingdom attraction in my opinion. And here we are about five minutes later. My ride is pulling up. Oh, it left. Wow, that's embarrassing. All right, here we are about five minutes and 15 seconds later, my ride is pulling up. And yes, if it's not busy, I do request the back row. It's the best row for animals because you can turn around and look at them as well. safari we just had this is why i say to go early especially it's in the 50s this morning so it was a great safari we got lots of giraffe action rhinos elephants lions cheetahs up and down saw the baby rhino baby giraffe baby zebra something spooks the bongos and they literally ran like right in front of our truck and they were like really fast so it was cool it was great um but no safari is complete in my opinion without a walk on the trail so we're going on the trail now 
Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail is one of the animal trails here that a lot of people often overlook. This is definitely an underrated treat in my opinion, but they're just walking trails where you can see some other animal exhibits. At this one, of course, the headliner is gorillas, but you also might see okapi, meerkats, monkeys, zebras, and we're at Animal Kingdom, and I like looking at animals, so let's do it. Look at that okapi. It's so close. Hello. She's so beautiful. Look at her zebra butt. <laughs> So we've got our dad, Gino, he's our elf male, the only adult male in this family unit. Um, we have two moms, Azizi is mom right here, she actually has her little baby, four and a half years. Right. Uh, can you get on the other side of the road? The keepers will hide them strategically in different places so you can see how they drape them on the tree branches. Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail check. Got some really good shots of the gorillas, including the new baby gorilla, Autumn. She's hanging out with mom, and I love the big male gorillas, especially because they had their blankies today, which are actually old Disney Resort sheets that are given to the animals, which I think is adorable. Um, and. I just feel like this is an underrated fun thing to do, especially on a very busy day. Um, it's a good break from the crowds, doesn't usually have a long line. It's also great for kids because you can have them walk around a little bit, burn off a little energy, which is always nice. And now friends, it's time for our first feeding. We're not going too far for this one. Headed to the Tusker House, which is a character dining experience. One of my favorite character meals in all of Walt Disney World. And it's a great, great breakfast. So let's go see Mickey, shall we? One thing that we get a lot of comments about and questions about is how to do a day where you don't run all over the place. Um, I'm by myself, so I don't have to navigate a stroller, and so I'm easily able to bop around for short wait times. And while I do think that's a little more necessary in parks like Magic Kingdom and uh, Hollywood Studios where you have so many big attractions you want to do that you really want to maximize your wait time so you do have to bop around a little bit based on where those low weights are. At Animal Kingdom, it's pretty easy to have a nice day where you're not running all over the park, which is why we're going to stop for our first feeding before we even leave Africa. I did mobile check-in through the My Disney Experience app, which is great. It allows you to check in for your reservations, let them know how many people are in your party. If you're celebrating a special occasion, do you need a wheelchair table? And then they will send you a text when you're ready. So I actually just got the text. It says your table is rather, rather, ready. Please gather and come inside the double blue doors. So here we go. Before we go inside though, I want to show you one of my favorite details and Easter eggs. This park in particular is incredibly detailed with so many cool artifacts and the way they aged buildings to make them look very, very old, even though they're not. And a lot of that was all thanks to an Imagineer named Joe Rohde, who if you've watched any kind of Disney documentary on Imagineering or how they build things, he's the guy with the very large earring, very eccentric. Um, but here they have all this collection of African masks for sale. And if you're wondering who's selling them, it's Jerody masks and beads, which is of course a nod to Joe Rody, which I think is really cool. Tusker House is a full service restaurant in Disney's Animal Kingdom in Africa, and it is a character meal with Safari, Mickey, Goofy, Daisy, and Donald. If you've been previously, you may remember it was a buffet, but when it reopened, it opened as a family style meal, so you still get all you care to enjoy, but they're going to bring everything to your table instead. So I actually like that better because then you don't have to miss the characters. And this really is the perfect day because I was sat at a table next to hyena portrait. You may not know this, but hyenas are one of my favorite animals. And now I get to eat with one. Course one for breakfast is here. We have the famous jungle juice, which is actually pog juice, what they call it at the Polynesian. They call it Florida sunshine at Riviera. It's an infamous juice here and it's passion fruit orange guava juice. A whole carafe of coffee. Thank you to my fabulous server, Crystal, for that. Um, and then course one, you've got some fresh fruit with some nice yogurt there to go with it, as well as a bread platter, multi-grain croissants, what they call safari bread, as well as a few little muffins with jelly, butter, and Nutella to put it on there. Hi, Donald! You look so cute! <laughs> I like 
like your holly in your hair. <laughs> Something very exciting has happened. Now Donald just came over and before at the character meals, um, you would have to, they'd be very clear that you need to remain seated and you could take like distance selfies and stuff. But Donald was actually calling people up to stay still distanced from him, but you could get closer to him and take a picture. And the cast member, the character attendant offered to take my phone and he took this picture. There it is, of me and Donald. So, still not quite normal yet. You can't get super close to them and like give them a hug and they're not gonna send their, your autograph book or like come to your table. But Donald was very clearly inviting every table up who wanted to to come and get, you know, within like six feet of him. Um, the same as the distance meet and greets at Town Square Theater and Fairytale Hall. You could get that distance from him and actually stand there and take a picture with him and have a little moment, so. The main course is here. Here's your skillet of breakfast favorites. You've got sausage, eggs, bacon, breakfast potatoes, Mickey, and Simba waffles. I love me the Simba uh, waffles. And then syrup, of course, and some uh, Durban chicken. I love this restaurant because not only does it give you the classics, but it also gives you a little something more adventurous, a little something more flavorful and spicy. Um, at, at the lunch and dinner, they serve like curries. And I'm not doing a full food review right now because this video is going to be long enough as is, but I came on reopening day to this restaurant and ate both breakfast and dinner. So I ate everything on the menu and we will link that for you so you can see a full review of the food. But let me just tell you, it's classic breakfast done well with a little twist. Hi, Goofy. How are you? You look great. I like your safari outfit and your holiday song. Have you been on a safari today, Goofy? Did you see any animals? I, I went on a safari. I saw a lion and an elephant and a giraffe and a zebra. I saw all the animals. I know, it was a great safari. Hi, Mickey. How are you? Oh, I love you, Mickey. You look so nice today. Your safari out. I'm about to do something that stresses a lot of people out and I need to know what side of the debate you're on. <laughs> Syrup on everything? Syrup on just the waffles. Please vote in the comments. Just finished a fabulous meal at the Tusker House. I love the Tusker House. Again, it's one of my favorite character meals. I think the food is excellent, and it's a lot easier to get a reservation here than it is at some of the other popular character dining locations. They've had walk-ups available all morning on their walk-up list, which you can check on the Disney tip board under the dining tip board, um, which is a great feature of the My Disney Experience app. Um, I booked this reservation last night, so you can usually get a reservation here easier than the other places. I recommend doing a late breakfast um, because it's a big meal and it kind of can count as a brunch so especially if you're getting in early at 7 30 to do early park entry as a resort guest or if you're rope dropping um, if you can do like a 10 o'clock breakfast that is a good big meal to fuel you through another part of the day plus you've gotten to take advantage of low wait times um, first thing in the morning so I always recommend if you're gonna do a big meal if you're gonna do a sit down don't do it early because you want to take advantage of the least crowded part of the day and then do it in a few hours once you've worked up a good appetite. Now you can see it's significantly more crowded than it was when we first got here, but still not too crowded. It would have been a, a good idea to go over to Festival of the Lion King, which is starting um, in not too long, but I've been sitting for a long time. I want to move my feet. So we are headed over to Asia. Also, as a little pro tip, always if you are at a sit-down reservation and drinking something that has refills like coffee or iced tea or soda, even water, um, always ask for a to-go cup because as long as it's something that has free refills, they'll get you a to-go cup and then you've got a lovely coffee to bring with you on your jaunt to Asia, wherever you're going. Made it into Asia and we know that because of the sign, but also the beautiful sound of the gibbons. I just love this park. I take it slow in this park. Unless I'm recording some kind of challenge or something. This park is just so beautiful and there's so much incredible detail. And I love that. Let's just look at these signs for a second. Let's just look at these signs. I know this sounds boring and like not part of a best day. But look. They've got signs for the Maharaja Jungle Trek. They've got signs for the hotels. And if you look around, those are actual buildings that they have. They have signs for the market. And then the market is right there. They've got 
signs for going up to Mount Everest, Cali River Rapids. It's just the detail in this park. And they had to go in and rust and age and weather all of the wood and all of the signs and everything used throughout this park to make it look really, really old, which is why this is part of why, one of the bajillion reasons why this is my favorite park. <laughs> Letting my breakfast settle before we hit another ride and, and finishing up my coffee. So, hello. Gonna check out the other major animal trail. This is the Maharaja Jungle Trek in Asia, located behind Cali River Rapids. Just look at these beer tabs. Why is this park so beautiful? This beer cart's closed, obviously, but those are beautiful. Anyway, just finished the jungle trek. A lovely walk, as always. I know a lot of people skip over the animal trails, but I really think they're a nice addition to your day, especially when you're having just a nice, leisurely Animal Kingdom day. Also, unfortunately, Cali River Rapids is under refurbishment, so you can't include it today on a best day ever in Animal Kingdom. That's definitely why I'm not riding it, because it's under refurbishment. There's no other reason I wouldn't ride this ride today. It's not like it's my least favorite ride in all of Walt Disney World and I despise water rides. No, it's definitely because it's under refurbishment, guys. Okay, don't worry about it. Did I schedule this video today for this reason? Who's to say? If your best day ever in Animal Kingdom does include Cali River Rapids, make sure to always check the refurbishment charts. We have them on all ears that we have a refurbishment calendar for any kind of attraction closures and refurbishments. We'll update it there because if you have an attraction that's like your must ride, will ruin your trip if you can't ride it. You should probably know if it's under refurbishment when you come or not. So, always check that out. Okay, it's been four minutes since I've eaten approximately. No, it's been like 20. But I feel like we need a little snackaroo before we go see one of my favorite things at Disney's Animal Kingdom, don't you? And uh, we're going to get that snack right here at the Anandapur ice cream truck. This is where you can get soft serve swirls, uh, vanilla chocolate, or twist, or they have a specialty sundae right now you can get as well. This is the lemon soft serve. So the kite tail sundae is a strawberry lemon soft serve swirl, but I love the lemon the most because it's tart and refreshing. And so I asked if I could just get lemon or strawberry and they said, yeah. So always ask because you might be able to make yourself a new treat. Also, they must be out of the kite tails medallion because I got the Yeti one, but that's all right. We're going to eat this while we go see kite tails. Kite Tales is the new show at Disney's Animal Kingdom. It's on the water here in, where Rivers of Light used to be, and it is just fun. It is just a good time. It's giant kites. Some of them are 40 feet long, and it's amazing. There is a new pass holder entrance if you want to take advantage of that. Uh, the show usually doesn't fill up. You can usually come a little bit later and get a spot. During the show, this show is whimsical and ridiculous, but I love it so much. Seriously? No, I have to stand. That's how serious I am. Kai Tales is a triumph. And the show is amazing. Now, I feel like it got, it does get like a lot of heat for being stupid, but it's not. It's a joy. Like, is it ridiculous? Yeah. Is that the appeal? Also, yeah, I dare you to watch the show and watch a 40-foot Mufasa balloon crash into the bleachers over there and not smile. And I love that they added an announcement beforehand that's like, they're gonna crash, it's okay. Because people thought they were messing up. 
when it first debuted, but the giant the giant kites and the balloons have to crash somewhere, so they crash into the bleachers over there, sometimes in the water if they miss. Um, but the Mufasa one is literally 40 feet long, so this is pretty incredible. There's two different versions of Kite Tales. There's a Jungle Book and there's a Lion King, and they alternate throughout the day. This show is great. It's a huge amphitheater, so you can usually walk up pretty quick and get yourself a seat just a few minutes before the show, unless it's a super busy day. Um, if it's a hot day, I don't recommend doing the middle of the day shows. I recommend coming earlier or later, but it is really fun, and it's very short, and it's just a nice addition to your day. So get yourself an ice cream, get yourself a drink, and come and watch Kite Tales. I promise you will smile. Before I head to our next attraction, spoiler alert, there it is. I heard a little music on the water, and considering the flotillas are still here at Animal Kingdom, I looked and it, there it is! Mickey and Minnie and Pluto in the 50th anniversary flotilla! They're so cute! Hi Mickey! Hi Mickey! Hi! Hi Minnie! Hi Pluto! I hope they keep the character flotillas even when regular character meet and greets come back. It's just really fun at this park in particular to be walking around and look at the water and see Mickey and Minnie and Pluto or Donald and Daisy and Launchpad, Goofy and Chip and Dale, Timon and Rafiki, Pocahontas and Miko. Those are all characters that you can see on the boats and if you want to spend some time looking for them, I recommend actually standing on this bridge near Everest because this is where the boats start and end their journey. You can actually see another one coming back. It looks like Rafiki and Timon. So if you stand on this bridge, you will be able to see the characters uh, more frequently throughout the day because they'll be where they where they start and end their their voyages. Little midday wait time check in for you. It's about 12:50. 90 minutes at Flight of Passage, 15 at Dinosaur, 15 at Expedition Everest, 55 zero at Safaris. Glad we did that early. Other attractions. There's not many. 45 at Navi. So pretty standard day here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Haven't used my phone much. I know a lot of people don't like using their phone when they're in the parks. I've really only used it to reference the wait times um, and the, the show times, honestly, at this point. So you don't have to be on your phone all day, especially if you're not using Genie Plus. But for now, we are headed, since there's not a long wait, um, to Expedition Everest, which is one of my favorite attractions in all of Walt Disney World. And what's great about Expedition Everest is it is a big e-ticket attraction. It's, in fact, a fancy ride on Genie Plus, meaning you have to pay extra for it but it also rarely has a long line. Even on the busiest days when Flight of Passage has like a three hour wait, Expedition Everest often hangs under an hour, right around 35, 45 minutes. So this is a fancy ride I would not recommend purchasing. I don't think it's worth it to spend $7 times as many people are in your party to ride this one, especially when it has standby at 15 right now. There's a single rider line as well. I did an entire video on using Genie Plus in this park and how to best utilize it if you are going to purchase it tips and tricks what to book when what maybe you don't need to use genie plus on we will link that video for you but just know i would not recommend purchasing expedition everest expedition everest has a 44 inch height requirement and it is a roller coaster that takes you up the forbidden mountain but you come face to face with the legendary yeti and even though it only has a 15 minute wait i'm still going to go through the single rider entrance here on the right hand side single rider is a service that disney offers at select attractions where you can fill in the odd numbered seats and it's usually a lot faster than waiting in standby but it does mean you'll be separated from your party if you had a if you had a party with you and it was only 15, I'd say go wait in the 15 minute line. But if it had a longer line or you wanted to ride again and again, single rider is a great option for that. This really is the best day ever because I'm in single rider and I still got my favorite row, which is the back.
Expedition Everest, an absolute must do. One of my favorite attractions in all of Walt Disney World. My favorite coaster in Walt Disney World. Very, very fun. And it's great that you can get on it either with a short standby time usually or a single rider line. Those are really going to help you avoid those long lines. Um, and it's great to ride at night too. So if you haven't ridden it at night, it's a totally different experience. So check it out then as well. We're going to scoot over to Dinoland USA now. Do want to point out that Finding Nemo the Musical has confirmed to come back in 2022. They are reimagining the show. It's going to still have the amazing puppets and it's going to still have a lot of the same music, but it's going to incorporate a storyline from Finding Dory. I was never the biggest fan of Finding Nemo the Musical, but I'm always excited to see a new rendition. And I always thought the puppets were cool, so maybe it'll be better now. But it is coming back, so if you're a big fan, get excited. Let's pour one out for Primeval Whirl, which is actually where I did my Disney College program a very long time ago. So rest in pieces, and uh, we'll see what happens next. Time to go back in time at Dinosaur, which is the OG thrill ride in this park. Before there was Everest, before there was Flight of Passage, there was Dinosaur. Well, it was called Countdown to Extinction back then, but it was basically the same ride. You get my point. Dinosaur is an awesome attraction, and it gets a lot of flat because people don't like it because it's dark and loud and bumpy, but I actually like it more than Flight of Passage. Cue the gas sound effect. I like actually moving through a set with giant animatronics versus a simulator, even if it is a really cool simulator. But you don't have to choose, you can ride both. We're gonna do that today. It is probably gonna scare your kids more than Everest would because it's incredibly loud, it's incredibly dark, and there are incredibly big dinosaurs running at you. Unless it's a really busy day, you can usually catch dinosaur at some point during the day with a very low weight. Right now it's the early afternoon, so people are starting to clear out of this park because a lot of people come to this park in the morning and then park hop out of it. So anytime in the afternoon, especially after 2 p.m., which is when park hopping starts, this ride gets a very low weight. Hello there. Welcome to our little trans-dimensional joyride, folks. I'm it's time for one of my favorite Disney fun facts of all. I say this one before, but maybe you haven't heard it yet. Um, if you look at these pipes right here, they are red, yellow, and white. This attraction used to be sponsored by McDonald's, so those scientific formulas right there are actually the chemical makeups of ketchup, mustard, and mayonnaise. Computer, all stop! Identify! Carnivorous. Definitely not our dino. Go, go, go! Still not our dino, but at least this one's a vegetarian. Carnivorous. That's it. Abort mission! Abort! Abort! Iguanodon. Again! Get them out now! Dinosaur check done. That's definitely a must for me on a best day at Animal Kingdom. I think it's a great ride. I think it's a little underrated, honestly, at this point. And like I said, you can usually get on it without too long of a line. Now, if we hadn't just had ice cream at Kite Tails, I would be stopping here at Dino Bite Snacks for the ice cream sandwich, one of my favorite treats in this park. But we already had ice cream and we got more food to eat. But that's a great snack as well. I will be doing a Best Snacks in Animal Kingdom video very soon, similar to the Magic Kingdom one. So be on the lookout for the social media posts asking your favorite snacks so you can weigh in. And also the video coming a little after that. Did you know that this bridge right here is called the Olden Gate Bridge? Isn't that funny? I love Dino Land. I think it's so fun and I think it's very well themed and not... A lot of people realize how well themed it is because they think it's just like a carnival kitschy uh, land, but it's actually very, very themed, which is fun. It's got a whole backstory about finding dinosaurs' bones there and a town popping up and a college students running the restaurant, and it's great. You can watch my Trapped in Dino Land if you'd like to learn more, actually. It's Rafiki and Timon. Little cutie patooties. 
we've sure had a lot of thrill in the last little bit of this adventure today so I think it's time for a little joy now this is not a year-round offering but considering I'm filming this during the holiday season and it's gonna air before the holiday season is over I felt it only right to include one of my all-time favorite holiday things in Walt Disney World which is the Merry Menagerie puppets before I go gush over these seasonal puppets, I did take a look at the Nomad Lounge waitlist. It said it was at capacity. Don't always listen to that though, because it still let me join it. So as long as you can click join and go through the process, you can still join the waitlist. It's got about a 30 minute wait, which means we got 30 minutes of puppet time. The Merry Menagerie puppets are just joy. They're joy personified. There's no better way to explain them. Just look, I mean, how are you not happy looking at that little penguin or these reindeer? They're these incredible winter animal puppets that come out throughout the day. There's reindeer and polar bears and a seal and a fox and penguins. And they have incredible puppeteers that bring them to life. And you will swear they're real animals. And I just, I'm obsessed with them and I love them. And the first day they were out, I spent two hours out here just like watching them and being amazed by them. So if you're here in the winter time, make sure you come say hi to them. They're amazing. Hi, sweet fox. Oh, big stretch. That's what I say to my dog. <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> You're so cute. Hi, baby bear. Aren't you sweet? Can I, can I pet you? Why don't you let her sniff your hand first? Let's see how she does. Ah! Oh, good job. Hello. You won her over. I love you. <laughs> You're so soft! <laughs> also, you can now buy a plush puppet of the polar bear or the penguin, and then you can interact with them with the puppet. And I did it during my Best of the Holidays video. We'll link it for you, my penguin Arnold. He was sleepy today. I tried to get him to come, but he was like, I want five more minutes. And I was like, we gotta get to safari, kids, you know? Um, but it's really cute. And I think a really fun, unique take home to bring home one of the Arctic animals. <laughs> have a few minutes before my estimated wait time for Nomad Lounge is up. So I'm popping into Island Mercantile to check out the merchandise. For me, shopping, big part of a best day ever in Walt Disney World, don't you agree? And I'm loving the new Encanto line. If you haven't seen it yet, it's absolutely fabulous. I loved it, loved it, loved it. The music is amazing. Um, I already bought those ears because they're so cute, but I also really like the lounge fly. And they just announced that Encanto is coming to Disney Plus for free on Christmas Eve. So get pumped for that. Also, I'm furious this jacket isn't made for adults. Or this dress. Like, I would wear this. I don't think I can fit into this. That's it. That's, no, the biggest size is that. That's, I don't think I can fit into a child's dress, but isn't that cute? Island Mercantile is one of the two big shops in this park. This one has a little bit more youthful things. It's got a lot of kids apparel. It's got ears. It's got toys. It's got plushes. Whereas Riverside Depot across the way is going to have a little bit more of your fancier stuff, your Judy's and Burks, your um, collectibles, your housewares, that sort of thing. But for me, I love Disney merchandise shops. I could go into a Disney merchandise shop for hours and just look around. So I always enjoy doing that. And that's definitely getting a souvenir is part of a best day ever. Do I need some new ears? I have most of these. So that's probably not what we're gonna get. I don't have those yet, those leather ones. I do like them, but they just, I feel like they had basketball ears at the NBA experience and then they were like, we're not opening this again. What can we do with this? So whenever I look at those, I just think about basketballs. Popping into Riverside Depot as well, just to see what they've got. They've got the Cozy Collection. See what I mean though? This is more like housewares, 
you will find some plush and toys in here, but you're also gonna find your designer stuff like your Doonies and Burks and things in here. LOL at the shirt I just found that says there are two types of people and then it's Magic Kingdom and Epcot. But um, I'm Animal Kingdom person, so where's that option? Which one are you? Share in the comments. I'm gonna buy these, which you probably may know I already own. But I wear a lot of scrunchies and also um, my cat ate one of them. Like, it didn't eat it. It's fine. But it chewed up the, the zebra one. So, I'm gonna buy this because I'm gonna treat myself to scrunchies. Also though, I have, an, I have an important reason I'm buying something. I don't just want a scrunchie right now. In addition to wanting a scrunchie, I also wanted to donate to the Conservation Fund, which is one of my favorite things about Disney's Animal Kingdom. They partner with the Disney Conservation Fund, which has donated billions of dollars to projects to help protect animals in the wild, like elephants and lions. So anytime you're in a merchandise shop here, or even Starbucks, you can add a dollar, two dollars, whatever you want to, to your total. Disney will match it, and they'll give you a button for being a conservation hero, and you can know that you helped save out in the wild some of the animals you saw today. I was texted by the Nomad Lounge. Oh no, the birds are coming. Oh, a nightmare. I mean, magic and wonder. Ah, there's so many of them. Nomad Lounge is one of my favorite places in all of Walt Disney World. It's this incredible lounge right here on the water. There's a beautiful outdoor patio as well as a gorgeous inside. And it's just a great place to sit back and relax and kind of forget you're in a theme park for a minute. They've got great bites, great cocktails. A perfect day at Animal Kingdom is not complete without a visit here. And I love that they do the walk-up wait list. They are very popular. They open at 11, so if you want to visit, I recommend either getting here right at 11 or even a little bit beforehand, or making sure you keep an eye on that walk-up wait list all day so that you can join it and be able to uh, come and enjoy a cocktail or a nosh. When they do text you back from the walk-up wait list, they give you about 10 minutes to come back, so make sure you don't go too far or keep an eye on what time it is. The Nomad Lounge is fabulous. I love just sitting out on this patio by the water. They do have some small plates. Uh, they have some specialties. Their sliders are fabulous. They do a soup. They've got ribs, charcuterie. They have a chili dog for the 50th right now. They also, you can order some things off of the menu from Tiffin. So you can do a couple of different bowls. You can do the spicy cauliflower. I also love their cocktail menu. They've got some really great things. I always get the Tempting Tigress, which is their take on an old fashioned, uh, but they have the Snow Leopard Salvation, which is a pear vodka drink that actually donates money to save the snow leopards. Um, they've got the High Tower Rocks, which is a watermelon margarita. Full bar, list of African wines and beers. It's just a great spot. Just look, I mean, big lounge chairs, very, very comfy, and um, I adore it here. One of the best things too about the uh, Nomad Lounge is that it's right on the water. So if you get a seat out here, you can request it um, when you check in. If you get a seat out on the water, the flotillas come by. So some of the characters will float right by, which is a nice added bonus to sitting out here. Hi, Santa! <laughs> This is in fact the Tempting Tigress, my favorite drink here. It is uh, Russell's Reserve 10 year old bourbon, St. Elizabeth Allspice Drum, tamarind syrup, and lime juice. So it's definitely a little bit more exciting of an old fashioned, but I really, really enjoy it and can't wait to enjoy it right now. I thought about getting something new, but it's best day ever. And this is my favorite drink here. So if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? It's so good. It's definitely got bourbon in it. You can definitely taste the bourbon, but it does have a little bit more spice than some do. It doesn't have a lot of sweetness. There, You can taste that there's a little sweetness, but because it doesn't have like cherry or orange like a lot of old fashions do, it's got a little bit more tartness than it does uh, sweetness. So I really enjoy this one, uh, but I also enjoy that High Tower Rocks if you're a watermelon tequila fan. Um, and they've also got a great sangria here made with South African rosé. So now we just vibe. This is the best day ever. For me, you have to build in some enjoyment, chill time into your park days if you want to last, if you want to have the best day, whether that be with a coffee or a cocktail or a light bite, you have to build in some just like relax and enjoy your company time. And this is the best place to do it at this park. Now let's say Nomad Lounge doesn't appeal to you. You're not uh, one to want to sit and have a cocktail or the menu doesn't look good to you or you've got little ones that you don't think will want to sit. There's lots of great stuff you can do in the afternoon for some downtime. A couple of my other favorite kind of low-key activities in this park include I actually really like it's tough to be a bug it's that 3d show inside the tree of life 
where you um, move through the roots as you go through the queue. And then it's a cute show with the Bugs Life characters. It's a little scary, not going to lie to you. There are some dark moments with spiders that scare some kids, but I think that's a great show and it usually doesn't have too long of a wait. You can also go up to Rafiki's Planet Watch, which is connected to Africa where they've got uh, a petting zoo if you want to meet some goats. They've also got an animation experience class up there where you can learn to draw a Disney animal from a Disney character artist. So those are some other great kind of leisurely activities if you are looking for something to do in the afternoon or something that doesn't have a long line usually. We are headed back into Africa now where you should hear the ticklings in your ears of the Koratinga Tingo. It's got 10 strings and it is a beautiful instrument that I, they just brought back the gentleman that plays it. And I'm so glad that live entertainment is back in Africa because it really brings this party to life. And we're actually going to stick around and watch another one of my favorite live acts before we head to safaris again. And I know you're thinking, Molly, why would we ride safaris again? when we haven't even ridden the headliner attraction in the park, but never fret, we'll get there. The drummers are gonna be performing in just a few minutes, so um, I think we need a snack. It's been a while since we've fed, so let's go get one of my other favorite snacks in Animal Kingdom that's just nearby. Say hello to the corn on the cob from the Harambe Fruit Market. This is grilled corn on the cob, grilled right in front of you, and then tossed in delicious African spices. Mm. It's so good. Mm, it's allspice. I feel like there's nutmeg in this. Garlic. Again, freshly grilled, right? Made to order. You don't have to get all the spices if you don't want to. It's not hot spices. It's just like flavorful spices. And it is such an underrated, delicious snack. Every time I eat it, I'm like, oh yeah, that is fabulous. And I know it's not like the healthiest thing ever because there's probably butter all over this. Or fake butter. But it's healthier than ice cream, more ice cream. Okay, obviously filming in the bathroom is weird, but I have to show you this. A custodial customer just walked away from cleaning this part of the sink and she left a Mickey. Why, why are cast members so great? You don't deserve them. Is coming back. It just brings this park to life. It was the part. This is the park I think missed Streetmosphere the most when it wasn't happening. And I just like almost got emotional watching them because I saw a bunch of families around making the memories that I have with my family. And a lot of people, their memories at Disney are not the headliner attractions per se, and they're not the big things. They're the little things. So I saw like a mom and her son dancing. I saw like a couple with anniversary buttons dancing to the drummers, and it just was like. When I talk about Disney with my family, we talk about moments like that. And that's what just happened, and it was beautiful. So make some time for the little things when you're in a Disney park, especially this one. That's my speech on that. And now we're gonna go on another safari. <laughs> the Kessers are being so sweet. I asked if the hyenas were out yet, and they're like, we're not sure with daylight savings time. They, you know, it's only the last few trucks that actually get to see the hyenas um, because this attraction closes early because you can't have it at night. But I'm also, of course, trying to see Festival of the Lion King. So it's like, will I get to see the hyenas? We never know. We, will, we do not know right now, but fingers crossed. A few things. One, it had a posted 20 minute wait, but I've only been waiting about five minutes and I'm already to the, almost to the loading dock. So in the evening, it's definitely uh, maybe over posted a little bit, but not too much. So I'm excited about that. 20 minutes isn't too long anyway. Um, we are cutting it a little close for the last Festival of the Lion King, which is our next stop after this. So I wouldn't actually recommend cutting it this close with Festival of the Lion King. This attraction can end up taking longer than the already long 20 or so minutes if an animal gets in the way or something like that. You 
you can have a backup on this ride. So I don't recommend cutting it too close, especially because Festival of the Lion King is incredibly popular. So I would normally recommend getting in line for Festival of the Lion King about 20, 30 minutes early on a normal day. Um, if you're not using Genie Plus, maybe longer on a really, really busy day. However, the last showings of Festival of the Lion King are usually the least crowded, and it's not a very busy day today. So I'm hoping we'll still get into the 5 o'clock show at Festival of the Lion King. Um, and the reason we're riding Safari again, one, I love this attraction and I love that it's different every time, but two, the African wild dogs flip-flop with the hyenas, and the hyenas are my favorite animal on the safari, but they're only out in the late afternoon, so fingers crossed they're out right now. Um, because with daylight savings time, not all the guests have been able to see them unless you go towards the end of the day. safari you know why the hyenas were out I just love the hyenas so much I feel like they get a bad rep and they're only out in the evening so I'm so glad I got to see them it was a fabulous safari great view of the rhinos tons of giraffe action hyenas duh, the best part um, no elephants but still a great safari the evening time is also a good time to go on safari because the animals are close to being fed so they are often moving and grooving because they're hungry which i get that from a fabulous safari with my favorite animal on the reserve we are now headed to my favorite thing in disney's animal kingdom ever and maybe my favorite thing in all of walt disney world festival of the lion king we've got about 15 minutes to spare Festival of the Lion King is a live entertainment show featuring incredible performers live singing to the music of the Lion King. It is so good. It's amazing. It's an abridged version right now. They still haven't brought back some of the acts um, for health and safety reasons, but oh, gosh, this show is so good. It is very popular. It's one of the most popular entertainment offerings in all of Walt Disney World. If you are coming to the show on a busy day, I recommend getting in line at least 30 minutes early, if not longer, or using a lightning lane if you've purchased GD+. I also recommend going to the later shows. A lot of people, like I said, go to this park in the morning and then hop over to the other parks. So the later you go, the more likely you are to get a seat without having to wait as long. So I'm going to the last show of the night tonight, and I'm gonna be able to just walk right into the theater. While I walk in, I'm going to go ahead and place my mobile order for dinner. Pick a window that'll work for me. I bet you can guess where we're going to eat. It's in the one land we haven't been to yet. And it's one of my all-time favorite things in Walt Disney World. so much 
so beautiful. Their voices are amazing. Brings tears to my eyes every time. One thing a lot of people don't actually notice about that show is that the animals dance and sing along. Like, watch Simba next time. He will sing along, and it's very cute. We are now headed to the mainland we haven't been to yet. Of course, that's Pandora, the world of Avatar. It's definitely the most crowded and popular land in this park, so I like to save it for the end of the night when people are leaving. Plus, Pandora at night, dope. So, I have ordered dinner at Satuli Canteen, my favorite quick service in the park. Here she is. This is a cheeseburger pod. It's one of my favorite Disney foods. It's a steamed bun and it's got beef and cheese and it tastes like a Big Mac shoved into a bao bun. This is the kids version, so you only get one pod and then you get your choice of side, drink. Always ask for the garlic herb dressing because it just makes it perfection. Um, but there's also an adult portion where you get two of the pods. But I often don't eat kids meals because I like to eat so many things throughout the parks that a kid's meal is one, less expensive, and two, just the right amount of food so that you can keep eating snacks. It's so good. <laughs> Tastes like fast food cheeseburger, but way more fun. Pandora at night is starting to come alive. It's beautiful. Now, here's the thing. Here's the 411. Here's the sitch, friends. We're all learning together still in the world of Genie Plus. And my pro tip for Flight of Passage, if you didn't rope drop it, used to be to come last thing at night. And it's a great tip still because A, you can come right at park close and you can wait in the line. Even if it's a posted 75 minute line like it is right now, you can wait in that line even if you get into the queue the minute before the park closes, which means if you waste 75 minutes in line, not waste, but if you wait 75 minutes in line, you're not wasting your park time. You're just waiting after the park already closed. So if you are okay still waiting in a long line, and the cast members did say that because of lightning lanes in Genie Plus, a lot of people are doing that so they don't have to pay for the attraction. A lot of people are choosing to wait a full 75 minutes or longer. They said it's only going to get longer during the last hour of the park being open. But the thing about this attraction is it rarely sells out of the lightning lane. And only on really busy days have I seen it sell out. Like all of Thanksgiving week, it's sold out. But as of right now, I can get one for in five minutes. So this is my current dilemma. Do I wait in an hour long line at six o'clock? Park closes at seven. Or do I spend dollars and skip the line? Those would be your options. Okay, here's what I've decided to do. I have acquired a Hawks Grog Ale. This is the green beer that you can get only on Pandora in the whole wide world. This is custom made for Pandora. You can get it at Pangu Pangu, the snack stand, or Satuli Canteen, the quick service where we just were. It's an apricot wheat beer. It's my favorite of the theme park custom beers, and I love theme park custom beers. Galaxy's Edge, Wizarding World, Jurassic Park, you're gonna make a beer. And you're gonna tell me you can't get it anywhere else and market it as something I can get on that planet? I'm gonna buy it. And this is my favorite one. But I have posted a poll on Instagram asking what you would do. Would you wait 75 minutes? Would you pay $11? Would you skip Flight of Passage altogether? Or would you cry dramatically? I'm gonna walk around for a while, enjoy this hot Frog Arrow, take some beautiful pictures and video of Pandora at night. And once I'm done, I'll have my answer based on what you think is the answer to the best day ever question. All learning together with lightning lanes. <laughs> and now I have to let you know the results are in. Four times the amount of you voted to pay for it than wait in line. In fact, more people told me to skip Flight of Passage altogether than wait in the 75 minute line. I'm surprised. I thought everybody was going to say to get in the line and I was going to do it and clock it for you. But I do believe cast members when they say the, what the lines are and if it's accurate or not, uh, they have a great feel for it. And I can see that it's pretty far back out, but I did buy it. I spent $11 on it. That's a lot of money. If you have more than just you in the party, if you have a party of four, that's almost $50. But the beauty of this system in a way for the fancy rides is that most of the fancy rides 
basically everything but definitely Rise and possibly Remy, they likely won't sell out on normal days, so you can make these last minute decisions. Now again, Flight of Passage did sell out a lot during Thanksgiving week. It sold out over Veterans Day weekend. Any busy day or holiday week, it's certainly going to sell out probably by late morning or early afternoon. But on a slow day like today, 30 minutes before the park closes, I was still able to buy one. So I did, and we're going to go ride it. I did notice a little before 5 o'clock when I was headed into Festival of the Lion King, I noticed the line was at 30 minutes. So it seems like there's possibly a sweet spot um, in the early evening, late afternoon where the weight drops. I think a lot of people are using the hack of coming last thing at night because they don't want to pay for it or wait in a long line earlier. And therefore you are going to end up waiting in a long line at the end of the night. And again, if it's after the park closes and you don't have anything else to do, who cares if you wait an hour at, you know, at park close at seven. Now, the one thing besides money, obviously, for uh, the Lightning Lane that's kind of a downfall is that you do skip some of the cool part of the queue. You skip, like, the laboratory where you see the big avatar in the tank. But, you know, not waiting an hour. And I did just see more cast members, and they also confirmed um, it would be 60, 65 minutes at this point. So this is just the Lightning Lane. Everyone else is inside the lab right now. Avatar Flight of Passage is definitely the most popular ride at this park. One of the most popular rides in all of Walt Disney World. It has a 44-inch height requirement. It is a flight on the back of a banshee, but not a real banshee, unfortunately. It's like a simulator ride where you're going to sit on a weird motorcycle seat, um, and it'll simulate you flying on the back of a banshee across the valley of Moara. Because of this, it has a very weird and constrictive seat, so if you're concerned about being comfortable, definitely use the tester outside before you wait in a long line for it. Um, it is in 3D. It makes me a scooch motion sick, but it is a cool simulator, so I usually just deal with it. Um, and it's a lot of people's favorite ride in all of Walt Disney World, so let's get to it and uh, fly. Passage done, check, ending with the most popular attraction in the park. It really is a cool attraction. It's beautiful. It's definitely worth a ride if you've never been on it. Um, but you're going to have to plan for that one. Again, best options for Flight of Passage are to either, if you're a Disney Resort guest, I highly recommend getting here as early as possible and going during that early park entry. Again, it was posted at 30 minutes that entire time. If you're not a resort guest, it looks like mid to late afternoon might be the best time. Or again, you can jump in line right at the end of the night. You just may be waiting longer than you used to um, because a lot of people are doing that now with all of the changes. You can also choose to pay for it like I did. This is again, not one I would tell you to pay for it right up front unless it's a really busy time. I would kind of weigh out and see what, what your day looking like and then decide later. The park may be officially closed, but we have one more little treat in store. The Tree of Life Awakenings have returned, and I love them so much right now. They're holiday editions, but basically, um, they light the beacon. This is the beacon of magic for the 50th anniversary, of course. It's Tree of Life, so they light it around dusk, and then every few minutes, they project these beautiful little stories on the Tree of Life, and because it's the holiday time, the stories are Christmas-related. There's like a little fox whose friends help him decorate his house that'll make you cry. There are little animals seeing snow for the first time. There's Santa. It's really, really sweet. And it's a great way to end the night. So, pro tip recap, what did we learn today? I think the biggest thing that we learned together today was Flight of Passage. The best times to ride it are gonna be if you're a resort guest, get here early for that early park access. If you're not a resort guest, watch it throughout the day. And it seems like mid afternoon, early evening may be a sweet spot where you can bump in there. Otherwise, consider paying for it if you really, really wanna ride it and you don't wanna wait in a line. Or of course, you can wait for it last thing at night. That line just might be a little bit longer than it used to be. We learned you probably don't have to pay for Everest. I didn't have to 
uh, wait more than 30 seconds to get on Expedition Everest today. Uh, we also learned that Genie Plus, probably not necessary in this park considering most of the weights we had today were very, very minimal. Also, pro tip, continue to use that dining tip board. Don't always believe it when it says the wait list is full for that dining wait list at places like Nomad Lounge. And basically, this is the park where you can most easily sit back, relax, and enjoy yourself. So use your app, use the tip boards to know what time things are happening and keep an eye on wait times. But this is really a park where on most days you can leisurely walk around and enjoy yourself. And that's exactly what we did today. Well, friends, that is a wrap on my best day ever here at Disney's Animal Kingdom, and I think we did pretty well. I rode Everest Dinosaur Safari twice. None of those had very long lines. Did get to ride Flight of Passage, had some great eats, treats, saw Festival of the Lion King, a couple of more low-key excitement, the Tree of Life Awakenings. It was a lovely, beautiful day here at Disney's Animal Kingdom, and I hope this video helped you decide what to do at Disney's Animal Kingdom, how to plan for your Animal Kingdom day, tips and tricks to maximize your day here at, again, my personal favorite park in Walt Disney World. We're going to do this for the other parks at Disney as well as Universal, so stay tuned for those. Let me know what your favorite thing at Animal Kingdom is down in the comments. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media at All Ears Net, and until next time, I'm Molly, and it's been magical. Want to see more of my videos? Click over here. Want to subscribe? You can do that right here. And also, ring that notification bell to make sure you get instantly notified anytime we post a new video. Thanks for following. See you real soon.